Welcome to Swa, welcome to Kingdom Influencer. I pray that you guys are doing well. I was listening to a song and the words of the song really caught my attention and the words took me to read Matthew 4, right? But before I go into explaining Matthew 4, which I believe uh, most of us do know what Matthew 4 speaks about. Matthew 4 was when Jesus was in the desert, right? And he got tested by the enemy. While the lyrics of the song says, I do not need to transform stones into bread to prove that you were with me in the desert, right? And then it goes on to say, I do not have to throw myself from a high place just to demonstrate your power. I wouldn't change the communion that I have with you, Lord, for any riches, for any palace, for nothing, because I know that everything will pass, right? So I heard the song and, you know, immediately jumped onto Matthew 4. And like I have explained, Matthew 4 is where it speaks about how Jesus got tempted in the desert. And what caught my attention in Matthew 4 was that when the devil went to Jesus, he said, if you are the son of God, you know, turn the stones into bread. If you are the son of God, then throw yourself. If you are the son of God, bow yourself to me. It was if you are the son of God. And we might find ourselves, right, in situations, in places. We may find ourselves surrounded by people that question who you are and question what God is saying to you. God at this very moment, God in these very um, days, right? He is stressing a lot about us trusting what he has said to you specifically, right? And blocking out what other people may be saying that is not according to what God has said to you. That is when you are not in confusion. There is no confusion. And that is when you are clear about what God has said. And when that happens, right, when you are certain, when you are standing firm on what God has said, it happens that people want you to test, not test, people want you to prove what it is that you've heard from God. People want you to show them that you were hearing from God correctly. And what we learn from this passage is that Jesus said, you know, I don't have to do nothing. I do not have to do nothing because he was certain about who he was. He knew that he was the son of God. He had heard the father tell him, you are my son. You are my son. And we have read that, G that God said to Jesus, you are my son, the one that I am well pleased. You are my beloved son, right? So Jesus, before coming on earth, he heard that. And he had the assurance and the certainty that he was the son of God. So why was the enemy testing him and saying, if you are, why did the enemy feel that Jesus had to prove that he is the son of God? Whatever, whatever his reasons were, Jesus did not fall into it. And that's the same thing for you and I today. It does not matter what people are saying. It does not matter how many people want you to prove that you are the son of God, that what you're hearing, you are hearing correctly. That's between you and God. That's between the relationship that you have with the father. There is no reason for you to go around trying to prove to people that what you are hearing is what you were hearing. Because if you know that you have heard from God, if you know that what God has said to you is true, Forget about everyone else and just focus on the assignment at hand. Focus on what God is telling you to do. Focus on the word that God has given you. Even better, protect that word. We know that our words are seeds. God has put this word, the seed, in your heart. He has given you the seed. Now someone else comes with their seed and they try to choke up that seed that God has put in you. So instead of trying to share your seed with everyone else, protect your seed. Protect what it is that God has said to you. Protect what it is that God has given to you. 
Don't try and prove anything to anyone. That's between you and God. That's between you and the Father. Do not, you know, trade a piece of bread. Do not trade the approval of people. Do not trade people coming back to you and saying, oh, yes, what you said was right. Just so that you can confirm, just so that you can show them that you were hearing from God. Sorry about that. Someone walked in. So like I was saying, do not find yourself trying to prove some things just so that you can be accepted, so that people can applaud you and say that you were hearing from God correctly. Jesus didn't prove to anyone that he was the son of God, like how God had said. He let his purpose prove to people that he was the son of God. He let what he was called to do show the people that, hey, this is what my father has said regarding me. This is what my father has shared with the prophets of all. This is what my father, you know, has revealed to other people. Now, I am going to walk this out without having to prove this to any of you guys. So whatever it is that God has said to you concerning kinder marriage, whatever it is that God has said to you concerning your business, concerning your situation, concerning your health, keep it to yourself. Protect that seed, protect that word, because you know that the word of God is that by his stripes you were healed. And you know that that promise is for you. So you have no business. You don't even have to try and explain it to people. You don't even need people to believe it with you. You need to believe it. You need to have it in your heart. You need to be certain that you are a son, a daughter of God. You need to be certain that you are called to be on this earth and on this earth you are going to walk in perfect healing that no sickness no disease will ever be part of you and if right now they are part of you it is for a moment just like how jesus went to the desert for a moment whatever you are going through right now it is for a moment because the word of the lord is true and if your heart is pure, if your heart is clean and your heart is receptive to hear and receive from God, whether it's correction, whether it's encouragement, whether it's discipline, whatever it is that God had to um, put you through or go through with you so that you can receive the word, then believe that word that the Lord has spoken. Like I'm saying, you know, it's not, there are times where, we need to double check what we have heard from God. But what happens when you have double checked what you have heard from God? Do you still keep double checking? Okay, yeah, you can do that. But if you are still going forth and you keep on double checking, make sure that at least you were double checking and you are saying to God, God, I am walking in what you said that I need to walk in. You know, I am doing what you said that I need to do. And I trust and I believe that if I am in error, if I am not hearing you correctly, if I am hearing another voice that I believe is your voice, I believe that you will save me. You are my savior. You are going to save me. I remember on Christmas Eve, um, the t-shirts that we had on, um, it spoke about, you know, how... It was look something, look something. I'm going to check and then put it on. And it spoke about how um, a king was being presented and the king was coming to save. And what Jesus was ministering to my heart during that time is whatever you are in right now, whatever you are going through, whatever situation that you find yourself in, Jesus is coming to save. One of his roles on this earth was to come as a savior. When I do something, you know, that I am certain that God has told me to do, when I walk in something that God has told me to walk in and other people do not believe me, I always say, God, because no one else is my God, you are my God. I am not disregarding what other people are saying. I am taking it to prayer, I'm presenting it to your altar, but I am going to do what I believe that you are calling me to do. And because you are my savior, because you have delivered me in the past, if God has delivered you from anything in the past, then he is your savior. 
You know, he is your deliverer. He came and he took you out from that very thing that wanted to destroy you. He took you out from that relationship that wanted to destroy you. He came and he fought against, you know, the devourer that was trying to devour your finances. When you look back at your life and you see what God has taken you out of, that is sign, that is proof that God is your savior, right? And he will continue to be your savior until he returns and he takes us up with him. So if he is your savior, then have it in your heart. Be certain, you know, that God is going to save you from whatever that the enemy has put along the way to destroy you. I believe that it's very heartbreaking to God when he opens up his heart to us, when he reveals to us the plans that he has for us, when he reveals to us his deepest secrets. And then after he reveals it to us, we doubt. And it's not because we are doubting because things are tough. We are doubting because others around us aren't believing what God is saying. Others around us aren't taking God's word. Or even, you know how sometimes they say, and I believe it's in scripture as well, that God reveals his secrets to his closest friends, something like that, right? So if God has revealed something to you that other people haven't got the revelation yet, instead of questioning yourself, right? Instead of saying, I can't hear from God correctly. I do not hear God. Why don't you look at it and say, wow, God chose to reveal this to me. Maybe I was the only one that was open to hear this. Maybe my heart was in the right posture to receive this, to hear this. And let us remember that we are humans, right? What God may speak to me about, right? God may come and present something pink to me, something purple to me. God knows that, you know, when he speaks about pink, when he speaks about purple, he will get my attention. And whatever he says concerning it, I will be open to it because I am a lover of pink and purple. But someone that likes black, if God tries to speak to them about pink and purple, is not really going to work. The same way that God may give you a vision of someone and the someone in real life has their lives totally in the pits, right? But because of your loving heart, because of your loving nature, because of who you are, you are able to see them through God's eyes. And maybe someone else that's a warrior, someone else that's always on the go someone else is like hey i do not like excuses i do not like stories if god tried to do that not to say that he can't yes he can but it's a little harder right how many times have we tried to convince someone of something that they don't like someone of something that is not in their nature yes sometimes you can convince them right but it takes time and there are certain things in this world that we do not have that time for anymore because we know that the coming of Christ is near. God is on his way to present his son Jesus to us. The groom and the bride are about to meet any time from now. The same way that God can reveal to someone in the world, in the realm of the spirit, what is going on in a certain country, what is going on in a certain household. And because this person, is in, uh, this person is an intercessor, this person will get up, this person will pray, this person will intercede, this person will wage war against whatever it is that God has shown. While someone else that's a soft hearted, you know, would probably still weep, would probably still be moved, or will probably just back out a bit because they aren't, intercessors they aren't used to you know always going to war that's just to show how different we are and because god is not a god that we can put in a box we can't disregard certain things just because what he has said to us isn't something that everyone else agrees with so this is what i felt led by the lord to share with you guys and you know something that was not prepared and something that the lord did not bring to me was what i just said a few minutes ago about instead of questioning what god has said to you look at it as 
God has found me worthy or God has found me with a pure heart. God has found me yielded, submitted to receive and hear about this very thing that he's speaking to me about. This is what I wanted to share with you guys. And I know more than ever, I know, especially beginning of the year, it's everything is just so chaotic. Everything's just run and run and run, run and run and run and all of that. And my desire since last year was, Lord, I want to help people, you know, I want to help people transition. I want to help people walk the first few months of the year because I know how these months can be. I know how the enemy attacks. I know how the enemy makes people feel discouraged. And I don't want anyone to feel discouraged. Hold on to the word of the Lord. He has never failed you and he won't stop now. Why will he start now? Why will he fail you now? And if by any chance you have misheard what God has said to you, remember, he is gracious. He is merciful, right? He knows that you are not perfect. He knows that I am not perfect. And if we have misheard him, right? If we did not hear him correctly, I pray that by his grace, by his mercy, he is able to save us, right? He is able to take us off the track that we thought was right. And by that, we are getting closer to him. By that, we are knowing him more. By that, you know, like they say, sometimes you need to fall and then get back up so that the next time you know what to do and what not to do. And a lot of people try to prevent that from happening to us. And of course, no one wants to get hurt, you know. No one says, okay, I want to go this way and I know it's the wrong way because I want to get hurt and I want to learn um, from life. No, no one does that. But it's life, right? It's what is in this world and it's what we have to go through. So I just want to pray that whoever that this word is for, that Father, you give them the reassurance and the confirmation of your word. And I speak, Father, Lord God, that this fruit will not only be a seed, Father, Lord God, that this word, sorry, will not only be a seed that is kept in my heart, but it will be, Father, a word, a seed that will bring back fruits, Father, Lord God. As you have spoken for whoever this is for, I pray that through this word, Father, you will bring encouragement, you will bring strength, Father, Lord God, and they will be able to stand on your word without wavering, Lord Jesus Christ. And if there is someone, Father, Lord God, that has misheard you, Father, if there is someone that is hearing the voice, Lord Jesus Christ, of someone that is not their shepherd, of the devil that is not their shepherd, I speak for I speak for the Lord God clarity over them. And I ask, Lord Jesus Christ, that you come over them right now in the name of Jesus. You take away anything that is making them, Father Lord God, go into the ways that are not of you. Trust in what is not of you, Father Lord God. Let your word stand. Let your word stand firm over their life. And I trust and I believe, Father Lord God, just like like how Jesus went through what he had to go through. And at the end, at the very end, he was not embarrassed, Father Lord God. His face was not covered with shame. I trust and I believe, Father, that that is also our portion. For those that will stand firm on your word, those that will believe what it is that you have said, those that will go, Father Lord God, till the very end, oh Father. I trust and I believe that their face will not be covered with shame in the mighty and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Bye-bye. <laughs>